All right, we're updating you in the Atlanta area coming out of September. So Q3 is in the books. Believe it or not, Q3 this year, a lot slower than Q3 last year. And with interest rates where they are right now, prepare for another very slow Q4. Fall season might be over already. There are some glimmers of hope, but right now it's a very quiet market. Let's talk about what's going to happen next. How's it going? This is Steve, real estate agent, Malone Home Team, EXP in the Atlanta area. All right, so we'll start out by saying thank you for joining us. Thank you for checking this out. If you would not mind, if you get value out of this, it'd be a huge help if you could like the video, subscribe. It just helps us to, to get found more on YouTube, kind of get our, our videos out there. Uh, that's number one. Number two, had a little bit of an accent in the garden or inside of the house the other day was cutting up uh, some hedges. Hedge trimmer. Fear the hedge trimmer. Good news is I've got all five fingers. We're going to get a little surgery on Monday. Everything's going to be fine, but I just want to let you know. Fear the hedge trimmer. Don't worry. I'm not going to gross you out. That That's as gross as it's going to get, but yeah. A little surgery to repair a little tendon, and we're going to be just fine. All right, you don't want to know about medical stuff. Let's talk about real estate. So what's going on? So coming out of September, okay, as we come out of September and into October, now we're starting to really get an idea of what's going on in the fall, okay, because typically Q4, Q4 can be a good quarter for real estate. A lot of people have to move in Q4, have to move before New Year's. Q4 can tend to be, for some people, their second best quarter of the month when it comes to the number of homes that they've sold or agents is when it comes to the number of homes that they've sold or when you just look at volume, things like that. Q4 can be pretty darn busy. All right, Q2 is obviously the king. You know, April, May, and June. People are trying to get in place before school, things like that. Q3 has traditionally started to slow down, um, you know, and then you get the bump up in Q4. Yeah, Q4 is nothing compared to Q2, but still, it is a decent... Uh, quarter last year was not that way. Okay, last year was a little was awful because of the interest rates, because of the market, because of all that stuff. So, what we're going to do is we're going to break down the numbers again. This is the this is the video where I go dorky, but the truth is in the numbers every single time, and we're going to show you some some trends that are you know I'm going to go ahead and say I mean the market is definitely changing. Is it a seller's market? Yes. Is it the seller's market that it was? Even just earlier this year, no, because we got a lot more listings coming on, online. Kind of surprising how many listings are coming online. We're talking about a weird percentage having to do with those new listings. We're going to talk about that too. We've got all kinds of stuff to talk about, so let's break it down, get into the numbers. We're going to get nerdy here. I'm going to try and keep it as entertaining as possible. This is Steve. Let's break into it. Your October update for real estate here in Atlanta. All right, so here we go. Let's break it all down. We are going to look at the numbers First thing we're going to do is we're going to look at what's happened over the last couple of months compared to what's happened this time last year, and we're going to look forward to see what's going to happen next. So first, we've got to look at the numbers, what happened, right? So let's go into the numbers. This is over the last month. Last month, average sales price was 502, still above 500,000. We peaked back in June at 528, then it's come down a little bit. It doesn't mean home prices are crashing. It's just average sale. It's not as big of a drop as we had last year. But last year, it was several months in a row where, temp, where prices went down, but then they came back up. Now they're going back down again. Let's take a look at new listings. This is interesting. New listings, 6370. But when you look at, compare that, and you add to the fact that we haven't sold as many houses, homes for sale is actually up to 11293. That's the highest it's been since last November. It's been going up, going up, going up, up, up. Pending sales. Way down, 37.39 last month when you compare it to September last year, 45.69. So fewer pending sales. Closed sales last month, 42.87. September the year before, 54.81. That's a big difference. 54.81 to 42.87. That's 25% at least. Just just doing it in my head real quick. Days on market about 30, about similar to where we were last year. Maybe a little bit more than where we were last year. Uh, month supply. This is an interesting one. 2.5. Of all the numbers I'm going to show you, this is the big one. Month supply is 2.5. Why does this matter? When you look back the last three years, we haven't been at 2.5 since dun, 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 May of 2020. We were at 2.6. That's when everybody was stuck in our houses, looking at each other, tired of, tired of the four walls and roof that we had. So we we're all stuck as the pandemic, right? That was about three years ago. So what I want to show you, though, 
just so that we can have, you know, the proper idea or the proper context here. Okay, we're, again, we're at 2.5. We saw that back here in May, 2.6, May of 2020. But look at all these numbers back then. We were in the twos to threes, the twos to threes, twos to threes, threes to twos. We had a four back in July 15. Since July 15, we've been below 4%. All this time, it's been a seller's market. Anything under five is a seller's market. Anything under three is a strong seller's market. Anything um, under like two is like a banana seller's market, right? So right now we're 2.5. It's a seller's market, but it's definitely not a seller's market. It's been. This is a seller's market to where if you are, if you look the part, right? If the house looks the part and you're ready to sell, got it at the right price, you can sell. Okay, that's the market that we're in right now. But well, people aren't just buying pieces of junk anymore. All right, so we're sitting at 2.5. All right, well, let's tighten this back up, bring it back to three years. Um, let's see, the other thing is I want to show you is percentage of list price. Let me move this box out of the way. Percentage of list price, we're getting about, on average, 98.9% .9 of list price. That's about where we were this time last year. Price per square foot, this is an interesting one because it's come down a little bit. It was 217, now we're sitting at 212. September last year, we were sitting at 206. So it's a little bit higher than it was last year, okay? I say all of that, looking at all of that. Here's one more thing. Shows to pending, shows, to li shows per listing. Shows per listing, five showings per listing. That's not a lot. Go back to September last year, it's 4.9. We're at 4.9, all right? So very kind of similar numbers. Shows to pending, 13.5. Last year, same time frame, about 13.8. What's that telling us is A, A is about the same as it was. B, what it means is shows per listing and shows to pending. You need, if the shows per listing is five, shows per pending is 13.5, it means you need 13.5 showings to go under contract. And if the average listings get five, what does that mean? It means you need to be doing better than the average listing because that's what we're talking about. You need to have really good looking pictures, priced right and everything to get your house sold in this market. Can you do it? Yes. So what is driving everything right now? Before we get into that, what I want to show you is the rolling three month number, because I want to put this in the context of Q1, Q2, through Q3, Q4. Okay. So Q3, let's talk about, first of all, closed sales. There's a number of homes that sold in the last three months. So this is Q3. We did 14,281 sales in the greater Atlanta area. Okay. When I look at September 2003 from last year, that gives us an idea of the of Q3 of last year, 17,370. So we went from 17,370 to 14,281. So I'm just going to do the numbers real quick because I didn't do it earlier. 17,370 divided by no, or is it yeah, 14,281. That's uh, I don't even know if that's right. 17,370. Divided by, and I'm a math major. You know what? I messed it up. I already messed it up. Let's just do it this way. Two, uh, 17,370, that's about 2,000 off. So 2,000 divided by 17,370 is, I screwed that up too, whatever. It's 25%-ish, something like that. There you go. Boy, I have to edit that out. Maybe I won't. Um, anyway, we're down 25% closed sales. Q3 of this year compared to Q3 last year. All right. Pending sales, 13,326. These are the numbers that are that are have gone under contract, 15,726. Again, much lower. Talk about, let's see, what else can we look at? Month supply. On average, it was 2.3 over the last quarter. Last year it was 2.1. A little bit lower. Sales price. Now, because prices have come come up a little bit, this is probably not going to be that much different. But 509 this year, last year was 486. So at least we're a little bit better this year, Q3 price-wise, than we're Q3 of last year. So what does that mean? It means Q3 was a heck of a lot quieter along around the Metro Atlanta area uh, than it was last year. I mean, uh, a lot. 25% is a big drop, okay? I mean, you can go back and look. I mean, let's look at closed sales, all right? So closed sales in June. All right, this will give you the last three months for June. So that was 16,000 sales, right? So that's, that's April, May, June, 16,000 sales. June of the previous year, look at that, we were at 20,000. So you went from 20,000 to 16,000. Again, that's a drop of what, 20%, I think? 
So you got that big drop. Uh, same thing with month supply. Let me see. June, you look at it was at two. June the year before was at 1.4. So you had a much you had a much slower June like Q2 this year than you had last year. Same thing with Q1. It's a slower year. It's a very slow year. We'll see what happens in Q4. What is everything hinging on? Mortgage rates. Let's talk about it. Mortgage rates. Right now, this is Wednesday the 11th. We had the bloodbath of Friday next last week. Friday of last week, we had the unemployment rate come in, and the unemployment report come in. They were expecting the uh, the country to add 150,000 jobs, add about 350,000 jobs. Dude, that about blew the market out because what the feds are trying to do is they're trying to slow the economy down. If they slow the economy down, bring the economy in check, then the mortgage rates can come down and all that stuff. But good economic news is going to rattle market the mortgage rates and push them up and that's what happened last year last week now we've had uh some time to digest that has come down a little bit we also have had um the attacks by uh between israel and the palestinians and the and the the, the issues that they have out there in the middle east that's rattled the markets too so um so there so it's at 7.6 percent right now so what's going to happen over the next couple of weeks? Nobody knows. But here's the problem that we have. We're at 7.6 right now, right? You go back two years, guess where we were? At three. Everybody's stuck in a low mortgage rate. Okay, we had the big jump up last year around June. We got past six and everybody said six is terrible. And people would, would, would jump in front of a car right now to get 6%. Okay, then we got up to about 7%. And then... Looking at the, this official mortgage rates from Mortgage News Daily, I think we got above 7% back in, what is this? This is July. And we've been above 7% since July. We haven't had any movement back below 6. We had a moment below 6 there. I mean, I would say since July, it's been 7s. I don't know when it's going to change. I like to think 6.75 by the end of the year, but I mean, I'm I'm almost ready to, to walk away from that. Okay. Here's the problem that we have right now with sales. Even though we have, a, you know, 2.5 months of inventory, the highest number of inventory we've had since the um, since the pandemic, this is the issue that we have had this year. This is a percentage of people who are in these mortgage rates. These are loan now. There are some people that own their home free and clear. We'll show that on the next slide. But of mortgage holders, 26% of mortgage holders are below three. An additional 44 are between three or yeah, they're between three and four. So you add those two together. That is what? That's 70.7% .7 of people below 4%. You throw in the 5% or the 4 percenters, that's 20.3. It's 90% of homeowners who have a mortgage are below 5%. 90%. That's like 91% 90, to make it official. 91% of mortgage holders are below 5%. What are we going to do? Rates are 7.75. Yes, you'll hear everybody's talk about, oh, you know, back in the 80s, back in the 80s, back in the 80s. This number right here, the 80s, nothing. 90% of people below 5%. They're not moving. They're not moving. Next slide. This is the other thing. Americans are sitting on tremendous equity. 38% of homes have their house paid off completely own the home free and clear, which is a pretty high number. I wouldn't have thought that, but 38.7% own the home free and clear. Congratulations, good for you. 30% of people have the house and have more than 50% equity in the house. So 68.7% of people either paid off or have at least 50% equity. So what can you assume about those two people? Well, obviously you own the home free and clear, you don't have a mortgage. If you have over 50% equity, you probably had your house a long time ago when you have a really nice mortgage. Those two groups of people in this market are likely not selling unless they absolutely have to. They're going to wait for the rates to come down. You know, I mean, if you're at a rate of 3% or 4%, you'll stomach going to 5.5%. I don't like it, but I'll stomach it. But if I'm sitting at, if I own the home free and clear and I want to sell it and I want to go, you know, get the next house, the next house is going to be more expensive. I'm probably going to have to get a mortgage. Why am I getting a 7 0.75% mortgage right now when I own this house free and clear. That's the situation that we're in right now.
Okay, so 68.7% of people have either paid off their mortgages or are at 50%, right? So those people aren't going to make any moves. Well, in the next slide, I always love to share this slide, okay? Because obviously, you know, we hear this. I have agents who are on our team. They've talked to their people and their people have said, you know, we would love to stress properties, foreclosures. If you have any foreclosures, let us know. Here are your foreclosures. This is since 2003. Obviously, we had the big spike back during the big time, during the 0708 debacle, and then the, the what happened afterwards. A lot of foreclosures on the market, a lot of foreclosures closed 09, 2010. But you see over the last several years, it's come down, come down, come down. You had a foreclosure moratorium where basically, like, unless it was a major, major, major issue, they weren't doing the foreclosures. They were, they got off that foreclosure moratorium last year. And what has happened? These numbers, and you heard on the news, and we talked about this and try and put this to bed. We heard on the news talking about, oh my goodness, foreclosures are up 300% this year from last year. Look at what happened. I'm going to zoom in. Okay, look what happened. It went from this to this. This is mucho smaller than this, right? So, so don't, don't listen to the headlines. I say it all the time. I used to work in the news. They're trying to get you all worked up. They're trying to get you worked into a lather so that you continue to watch the news. Okay. I'll shoot you straight. My, I'm shooting you straight and saying there aren't as many foreclosures. Could that change? Absolutely. But because people have so much equity in their houses right now, it's probably not. People are just going to sell their house and get out from under them instead of being foreclosed on. So that's what we're looking at to, to, to get back to the, the issues that we have right now. Okay. Closed sales are way down. Again, over the last three months, 14,281 for Q3 compared to 17,370 last year. It's a good 25% down here in Atlanta. It's down across the country. We're going to have one of the slowest national numbers or national years in real estate since 0708 as far as the number of homes that are sold. So from the standpoint of if you're, if you're basing, did the market crash off the number of deals that are done, then this is a market crash because of the number of deals that are done. I think people are more worried about the fact that the market's going to crash because they're going, homes are going to go down 20%. Homes aren't going to go down 20% because month supply. We're sitting at 2.5. Here, I'm going to go back to the one month. Whoa, what did I do? Go back to the month. I'm going to go back to the max. Just so you see this. This 2.5 right here is below anything you saw back here, right? In all these years, home prices went up. These are all healthy seller's markets, just regular, nothing crazy seller's markets back here, okay? Then we got during the pandemic and everything went crazy when all the, the prices of homes went through the roof because there was nothing out there, okay? And then home prices are going up. But if home prices stay in this range between 2% and 4%, you're going to get the normal 4%, 5%, 6%, um, um, appreciation in home values every year. That's what you're going to get. So we're not going to freak out about it. I'm just going to tell you straight. Okay. And the reason why we've had so few deals and we've insulated ourselves from, from the market is because of this right here, the lack of homes on the market. Okay. Now that's a snapshot Q3 this year, a whole lot slower than Q3 of last year. Laid it out, showed you mortgage rates to show you why, showed you about the people not selling their house, all that stuff. Now, crystal ball time. Let's jump in. What happens next? All right. So again, crystal ball time. Let's do this. What's going to happen Q4? I think Q4 of this year is going to be slightly better than Q4 of last year. Q4 of last year just shook the heck out of everybody. Okay. Like everybody was just shocked by the rates, whatever. People are over it now. Now, rates in the sevens stink, but I think a lot of people are still seeing the opportunity to get a house at this point. I think that Q4 of this year is going to be a little bit better, not substantially, a little bit. Where do I think the interest rates are going to go? I've been saying 6.75, 6.8 by the end of the year. Then they got back up to around 7.8. I still don't think they're going to crack eight. I think a lot of craziness has happened. The unemployment rate you know, won't, won't come back down and unemployment won't come back down. And I don't, that's, that's the last thing to break. Okay. But I think that the feds are confident in that everything that they've done is slowly having an effect. It's just a slow effect. 
you know, I would like to see the mortgage rates closer to seven. I think mortgage rates get to 6.5 by spring, which is my guess. Spring is going to break back open next year. We're just going to have a normal year and I think a little bit better year next year than we are having this year. Now, that being said, all bets are off. So what does it mean if you are a seller or you're a buyer? Okay, if you're a buyer, and I've said this in all my videos, I get pushback, but this is it. Let's do this. If you're a buyer right now, okay, this is your market. I just showed you there's nobody out there. There's nobody buying compared to this time last year. It's down 25% Q3. It's going to be quiet Q4. Sellers who want to sell, I just showed you the numbers. These people, like most of the people who have mortgages, you know, I mean, that was a 90% or below five. If you're selling your house, you have to sell your house. That's why you're selling your house. This is an opportunity if you're buying to jump in and get a deal. Yes, interest rates at 7%, 7.75%, whatever, stink, 100%. But here's a kicker. We did the math on a previous video. If you buy the house today, get the higher rate, own it for two years, and then refi when it goes down 2%. The mortgage you have today is going to be pretty darn close to that mortgage you're going to get in two years. Because in two years, that house that, let's say you're buying a $400,000 house, it's going to go up 5 to 10% next year. Five to ten percent the next year, okay. So it's going to be a, what four seventy five ish house, and it's four hundred right here. You're at seven percent here. You're at five percent here, or five point five. So let's go use seven point seven five, five point seven five. You're talking about a very similar, similar, similar payment, okay. So if you're waiting for a lower payment, you're going to buy buying a more expensive house and paying just about as much, anyway. Or you buy here. At 400, 7.75, and when you get to here, you refi at 5.75. But you're not getting a $475,000 mortgage at 5.75. You're getting a $400,000 mortgage. At that point, it's like a 390 or 380 mortgage at 5.75 or 5.5. Then you're talking about substantial savings. Okay, so if I'm a buyer and I have the opportunity to buy and I'm thinking about buying, this is it. Okay, now if and I try to, to say this all the time. If this is not your market, this is not your market. If this is not your, if you don't want to buy a house, don't buy a house. If you don't have the money, don't have the money, don't buy it. Okay. If you're worried about the investment, then, and if you think it's going to go down in value because whatever, real estate may not be the investment for you. All right. I don't see any, any downside in buying a house right now. Okay. People are thinking that we should wait until everybody comes back into the market when you have multiple offers and things are crazy again. That's a better time to buy a house. I, I don't understand. I don't understand that, but that's what people think. That's a natural inclination. If you go to a movie theater and you see 700 people standing outside the movie theater, you think to yourself, holy crap, that's a great movie. We got to go see it. But nobody's standing outside the, the movie and you're like, well, crap, nobody's at that movie. That's a terrible movie. I People see like buying a house, the same thing. If there's people like putting 75 offers on a house, we must have to put an offer on the house. It's just a natural inclination that people have. And I'm just, you know, how the, buying a house is an investment. To me, you get the best price possible, the, the easiest deal possible. You know, are you kidding? Right now you can get homes under list price. You can get an inspection. You can get it looked at, get an appraisal, get all that stuff. Like right now. Okay, I can't promise you're going to be able to do that in the spring. Okay, so keep that in mind. It's a great time to buy a house. Selling-wise, this is a great time to sell. We still have low inventory. It's a seller's market. Is it like it was? No. If you wanted to get top dollar and get the easiest deal possible and get all that stuff, yeah, that was like a couple years ago. You'll still sell for more now than you did two years ago because the prices have come up. Keep in mind, prices are always going to go up. There'll be wiggles, but they're going up, right? Over time. So like if you sold your house four years ago, the house four years ago, it's worth more now than it was four years ago when you sold it. That's just the way that real estate works. Now, it's not the fault of the realtor or the fault of anybody. It's just the way real estate works. If you sold to buy something, I think you bought one up in price over the last four years. Okay, So if you're selling, this, this is still a good time to sell. But you have to keep in mind, we're not just putting a sign out front and praying that it sells. we got to do a little work. we got to stage it. we got to do some painting do some cleaning, and it has to be priced right. It has to be. I talked to somebody earlier today who 
the house is probably something worth the low fours. They basically said, I'm going to sell it for 500 and that's what I'm going to sell it for. And maybe you'll sell it for five and it's probably going to have to be three years from now before you sell it for five. But in this market, if it's listed, if it's everybody knows, buyers know, okay? That's the thing. In this, in this world that we live in, I go and look at a house. I was just doing this the other day, looking at a house. And the buyers, the buyers are out on their phones. They know who owns the house. They know who all their friends are. They know all the tax information about the house. It's all public information. We don't share that with people. People look that stuff up on their own. People know how much the houses are worth, okay? So you can't over overprice the house. I want to get you 500000 I want to get you 800000 800, I'd much rather sell an $800,000 house, 100%. But that's not this market. So we just got to be smart. If it's priced right, looks the part, then we're going to make that thing move because there aren't enough of those houses on the market right now. So if you need to sell, we can get you sold. If you need to buy, we can get you a house. This is your market. In my time being here, I said probably since the first, since the first time, um, since the pandemic, this is the best opportunity you've had to buy a house since the pandemic. I'm jumping all over it. If I want to buy a house, if I see this as the investment that it is, I see this opportunity to move my family up to get that, I'm taking a swing all day right now in this market. Then you refi when everything goes down. Let's talk about two. There's three things that are going to happen. The rates are going to come down. If so, you refi. The rates are going to stay the same. And if so, the number's gone up anywhere in the house or the rates are going to go up and you're going to have a lower price or lower rate anyway. Okay, you're always protected because you can always refi if it goes lower. It's not like you missed it and you get the house cheaper. And you're in a situation where there's fewer, they're not 100% no multiple offer situations, but there's fewer multiple offer situations. Um, this, is, this is a great time to buy. I wholeheartedly believe that. Okay, I could be wrong. You can at me. We can talk about it. I'm okay with it. But in my opinion, that's where we are. So where are you? What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Again, give me a like, give me a follow. That was your Q3 update for Atlanta. And we're gonna make something happen in Q4. I can feel it. We're just gonna make this happen. We're gonna, we're just gonna, we're gonna knock it out. Unless their rates go to 8%, and then it's all over. But you know what? We're gonna think positive. Okay, because look, I got all my fingers. So we're gonna think positive. Y'all take care. Steve, Malone Realty Group EXP. Bye.